Holy shit, all right. This is it, man. I don't know how long this fucking video is going to be. But this is it. This is the end, my friend. This is the end. This is the end, my faithful friend. I need to play some doors. This is the end, down, down, down. The end, my faithful friend. See what happens with that car. Shadows. You son of a purple bitch! Purple people eat us! Ah, the Kisserai. I remember him well. Submit. I may be bested in battle, but I shall never be defeated. You cannot hope to defeat me. I have been here before. This time I shall never leave. So be it. <laughs> oh shit! Fuck my life. You can attack me. Do what you must. Do. Watch out! Don't give me no hundred thousand, son. Cause I'll be one bad motherfucking demon lord if you do. Alright, so anyways. We've seen the death of Dakon fall from grace of Nana. to see the death of one more uh, one more fiend.
I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm going to save as WTF. What? What? Are you serious? I can't. I can't. Okay, well, just WTF then, asshole. The huge crystal radiates a pulsating spectral light as it hovers above the crater in the middle of the room. The rhythm of its pulses reminds you of the heartbeat, but slow, sickly. Light from the crystal touches the edges of the room like fingers, each ray of light casting a glow on the ruined faces of the statue surrounding it. How about I just kick the shit out of it? <laughs> Ignis, I am Demon Lord. I am betrayed. You fucking monkey ass bitch. We just fucking annihilated Ingus, by the way. I just wanted to let you know. We stabbed him to death with celestial fire. When you have constitution such as my ass. That's right. Beat the fuck out that motherfucker. Beat his monkey ass. What is this? Sounding stone. I don't give a shit about a sounding stone. Go fucking suck your sounding cock. You cock sucking son of a bitch. Oh my god, did I just put that on YouTube? Holy shit, I need to watch my fucking mouth. Fucking shit! Fuck you! You fucking lame LP and son of a bitch! That sounds like the whip and change your mama brings me, bitch! I use it. Continue listening. I'm not reading all that. Whatever the fuck that just said. If you can read that, you're a fucking idiot. The huge crystal radiates a pulsating spectral light as it hovers above the center in the middle of the room. The rhythm of its pulses reminds you of the heartbeat, but slow, sickly. Light from the crystal touches the edge of the room like fingers, each ray of light casting a glow. We touch the crystal. There's a moment of dizziness. As you touch the crystal, then a slow chill passes through your body, and you discover your muscles have locked, your hand frozen to the crystal surface. It's like your tongue attached to a fucking freezing pole in the movie called A Christmas Story. There is a moment of silence, and then sharp pains begin splintering through your body like fractures. You feel as if your very being is being turned to ice and then shattered. Oh shit, end game time, motherfuckers. End game time. He has awakened. Finally, I thought I would die again, waiting for him to rise. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps you still die. Never forget to die. Watch you thieves. You kill us. Kill us all. All three of you. Have you care how you speak to me? You deranged wreck! How fortunate to reach all of these traps you scattered throughout the plains! I swear, if I could have crossed years to put you out of your misery, I would... The two of you be silent. Let us make sure he's alright. And save arguments for later. <laughs> Who the fuck are you all? By the hells! He's lost his memories! Damnation! He's useless to us now. Calm yourself, he's only disoriented, as we all will. Give him a moment to get his barings. You all of these were in my body, my body! You'll give him back! I am gone to the limits in my patience with your howling. Be silent! The arguing avails us nothing. Give him peace, space, leave him pee. This time, no longer for the fail. I'll not stand here and squander another moment while our adversary is no doubt hunting for us. We've waited long enough to awaken him. I will speak with him now. The 
man with all your resembles, but he carries himself much like a force than a man. His eyes are watching you carefully, and you study him. So, let us come to this. Who are you? I will not surrender my name to you or any man. As I, who I am, you should be asking yourself that. You are one of my incarnations. You made it here. My clues to guide you. If there's anything I've hated about you, it's your countless questions. Your desperate fumbling and the meaning of answers. The man's voice is like a hatchet. An anger flickers across his features. The time for questions is past. Now you will listen to me. I will be the first to breathe this fortress, and whatever it awaits us, he will somehow be able to beefy me. It will not best me a second time. You sound as if you intend to fight. Whatever it is that lurks here. Ah, I need you to be the shell. But your mind must be my mind. Do you understand me? You mean to intend to possess me? Yes! He glances around at the spiked walls, then turns back to face you. We cannot leave this place in pieces. Only one may leave. What are you talking about? You must surrender your will to me. Your knowledge, your skills, whatever little you manage to accumulate in my life may prove useful. He sizes you up again. It's ultimately will, but a fraction of my power. It might have its uses. And its juices. If you have a 21 intelligence or wisdom, tell him that you want to merge with him. Holy shit! I intend to merge with you. Choice 11. So be it then. His eyes become gray like mist, and he gives a slight smile. We shall see what your mind has in store. As you swim in the corridors of his mind, the first emotion, the encounter is surprise, and his eyes widen. He is not absorbing you, your will is stronger and it is consuming him. You feel desperately as he's trying to pull back, but he cannot. He is fucked. And your will blocks his retreat while drawing him deeper into your subconscious. This is the last time we should ever speak. Return to death where you belong. Cocksucker. He looks incredulously for a moment, and then disintegrates as you feel a rust of knowledge pouring through your fighting to the surface. It's almost too much. So much knowledge. So many experiences that... You get intelligence and wisdom and 96,000 experience points! And as quickly as it occurred, the rush subsides, and you steady yourself. The bits of knowledge swirl about you in your mind, and you will to make sense of them later. For now, only one piece of knowledge is important. He lied to trick to you. Damn it! We heal. And we also level up. And we go to the full 25 constitution. At this point, we are what I would like to call the baddest motherfucker on the face of the plains. 25 wisdom, 25 constitution. Your wisdom marks you as one of the wisest individual bat-ass motherfuckers. You make Steven... What's his name? Oh, yeah. Well, fuck him anyways. And your constitution. Your constitution marks you as one of the toughest in individuals in the multiverse. You gain plus seven hit points per level. Oh, and Stephen Hawking, fuck you. My nameless one is smarter, you stupid cocksucker. Now go float around in your wheelchair somewhere else, you fucking loser. Now talk to the paranoid incarnation. The man before you resembles you. But his back is hunched. His arms are horribly gnarled and scarred as if they've been dunked into a stream of acid. When his left arm looks like it's holding on by a thread, literally, who are you? Now that you will not last long in a place, thief! Spittle flies from the man's mouth and his face twists in a maddening grin. Mazes, regrets, and death are all that are here! What do you mean? You are the thief! The incarnation's hand twists as if it's wrapped around your neck. 
I will feel your bones on your neck. Snap beneath my fingers. Take my body back. You wear my body like a cloak. You shame me. I am no thief. I stole nothing from you. You stole everything. I awoke on the streets of the Ring City. And all who saw me knew me. He takes a rasping breath. All that you done. All that you harmed. They're waiting for me, blaming me, hurling me until I can take my voices no more. His fingers grasp at the air. And they make him silent. You are the one who left the trap and the century stone for me, weren't you? In the Dahi Cathedral. Journal with the traps. He affixes you with a worry eye. It seems just looking at you, making him uncomfortable. You tell him to shut the fuck up for one moment. What you want to do if you follow this path is talk in the language of Eel. As you speak in the language of Eel, the Incarnation's eyes widen and he stares at you. After a moment of silence, he replies in the same language. Only I know the language of Eel. How do you know it? You are correct. You are the only one who knows the language of you. So, if I know the language of you, I must be you. He is silent, staring at you. You have suffered much. You were born into a world where nothing made sense. Where strangers claimed they knew you. They blamed you. And they most likely fucked your girlfriend because you were a loser. I will protect you now and you will know peace. Lay down. Strength and constitution increased permanently. And now we will talk to the good incarnation. Have we ever had a name? Or was it was just the first of us? The man chuckles softly. No, I am your ally in this. I, like others, have died. My death in your mind. And this figment is all that remains. But who are you? Ah! The smile fades and he looks at you with concern. This must be disorienting for you. Let me try and explain. I am one of your incarnations. I was once lost, and I am here again. But how is this possible? I do not know. However, you were touched within the fortress has brought pieces of yourself to the surface. He pauses for a moment, thinking. One of the others must know the meaning of how it came to be, but it is beyond me. If you are a part of me, there are things I must know. In order to leave, you must become part of me. Will you do so? You know you'll cease to exist. One last thing, just this. The Incarnation pauses for a moment, searching your features. Before I return to Oblivion, there is something I would know. I shall wait for you in death's halls, my love. Transcending one. Then you shall die again. Alright, folks, this is it. This is the last part of the game. So, you have come. You are unwelcome here, broken one. What have you done with my friends? Are they 
are dead. Yes, unlike you, they have but one life, and they wasted it for your sake. They died for you, as they always have such a way of all mortal things. It is the fate of all that follow you, broken one. You've forgotten that much. Why did you do it? They have tried to harm me. All places, I defended myself. I'm so doing, mortality claimed them. Their deaths were by their own hand. So you killed them? The tiefling girl, especially fierce in her defense. Her feelings for you burn brighter than Elysium's fires. In the Tanare, she was quite strong. Her tolerance for pain would have shamed the bazaar to themselves. I took no pleasure in their death. Then why did you do it? It is not my will. It is not that I brought them. All of them had a choice. And they chose to die for you, seeking a release, but they not know why. You have forgotten this, and you shall again. I am that which split from you by the hog's power. I am that which walks with all life, my voice a death rattle, a last breath in my throat, a whisper of a dying man. I have been freed from the prison of your flesh, freed from me. The moment I was split from your cancerous ship, I knew life. I knew freedom. I shall not surrender it to you. We were not meant to be separated, and the planes have suffered because of our separation. You know nothing of meaning and separation. Before your memory dies again, know that we were never meant to be as one. The last be the last time, and I shall speak, broken one. Then there is something I would know, spirit. I have traveled far, and there are many questions. I will indulge you this one last time. Then the fortress shall be silent again. What changes the nature of a man? The question is meaningless, nonetheless. Before there is an ending between us, I will hear your answer. Then this is my answer. You are the proof. Nothing can change the nature of a man. If there is anything I have learned in my travels across the plains, it is that many things may change the nature of a man. Whether regret, or love, or revenge of fear, whether you believe can change the nature of a man can. Then you've learned a false lesson, broken one. Have I? I have seen belief move cities, make men stave off death, and turn evil hags' heart half circle. This entire fortress has been constructed from belief. Belief damned a woman whose heart clung to the hope that another loved her when he did not. Once, it made a man seek immortality and achieve it, and it has made a posturing spirit think it is something more than a part of me. Your defiance will hurt you more than any wound in this pass. Believe cannot change the nature of a man. And I think it can. I think believe could even unmake me if I believe it enough. You do not possess the forge of will for such a thing. So you admit it's possible. Do not try my patience, broken one. You are a fool. You think you can achieve such a thing? You can barely keep your own tattered mind intact. There is nowhere left for you to fall, broken one. Stop! You know not what you do. I know what I do. You have tormented me enough. And now it ends. If you do this thing, we shall be undone. There shall be no fate here. You destroy us both. As I see it, I have two choices. Either I kill us both, or I let you kill me again and again, losing what few pieces of my mind I have left. I think I'd prefer we both die. Unless you have a third solution. There is no other resolution to this matter. I think there is. We can become one again as we are meant. You know not what you do. If we are reunited, it shall be an ending. There shall be no future for us. It is better to happen than the multiverse continue to suffer because of us. If we become one, we shall suffer. 
There is too much of the nature of the first one in us for us to be saved. We shall be darned. You know not what you do. No, I know very well what I do. And I think this is the only answer. Prepare yourself. Know that I have always hated you, broken one. When we are one, I will continue to hate you. And when your shell dies at last, know that I shall take pleasure in your death. I can live with that, and so can the plains. Know that my hatred for you will unmake the plains. Prepare yourself! We shall be one again until your last moment's life! Before we do, what are my friends? I am mortality itself. Very well. As you reach out with your power, Morte suddenly floats into the air. <laughs> Hold up, Chief. You don't need to resurrect me. I was, uh, I was just kind of lying here, you know, listening to the two. You were feigning death? Uh, yeah. I'm already dead, and, uh, Chief, what happened to your voice? I am something else now. Time runs short, and soon time and fate will catch up with me. I will return to your sigil, Morte, if you wish it. Uh, return me. What about you? Come on, Chief. I may be a coward, but there's no way I'm leaving you in this place. Many other crimes that were committed when my mortality and I were split. These crimes carry a price. You may not go where I will soon be. Well, I could go with you anyway, Chief, if you wanted me to. I mean, we've been through what? Not this time. Perhaps one day, you and I will meet again on another plane. But not now. Morte stares at you for a moment, then sighs. Not to get all misty eyed, but uh, it's been a pleasure, Chief. Farewell, Morte. <laughs> you reach out with your power. There's a rush of air, and Anna stirs. She raises her head slowly, then shakes, confused. Anna, are you all right? Anna's eyes widen as she hears your voice. What, what happened to you? Your voice it echoes, it is. I've changed. I am something else now. And I cannot remain here much longer. I will return to Sigil, if you wish it. What? Anna opens her mouth and then pop. What? Where are you going? Many are the crimes that were committed when my mortality and I were split. These crimes carry a price. There is a place reserved for one such as I on the lower plains. It is punishment of a sort. But I, I don't want you to go. I will not forget how much you were willing to sacrifice for me, Anna. Anna nods. She looks as she's about to say something else, but then falls silent. But the unspoken thought remains in her mind, lingering. I do not need your words to know your heart. Anna, farewell. As your power touches him, Dakon stags a staggered breath and then looks up weakly. Looks as he's barely clinging to life. Awaken that corn of Shalak Talor, last wielder of Kalash Blade. As he hears your words, Dakon slowly nods. Your voice. Have you at last come to know yourself? Yes. It was a difficult thing. 
It cost many lifetimes. Many suffered so that I might know myself again. The knowing of oneself is a difficult path. And knowing it, I know where I shall soon be born. Time and fate come here even as we speak. And I will not be here much longer. I will return you to Stigil, Dakon, if you wish. Dakon falls silent for a moment. When he speaks again, his voice is sharp, as if severing the link. No, that I once owed you a debt. No, that you saved my life. And no, that I followed you to settle that debt. I have paid for your life with mine. The debt is settled. Very well, Dakon. Our two deaths were as one. You will leave this place with your freedom. As your power touches fall from grace, she rises dizzily to her feet. Even disoriented, she somehow manages to maintain her composure. Fall from grace! Fall from Grace looks up, and she holds her eyes for a moment, and then she smiles. But it's a slight smile that carries more sadness than anything. Your voice. So, you found yourself at last. Yes. The price was high. The cost was many lifetimes. Mine. And others. The price of such a thing is set the measured in copper. Fall from Grace studies your features. Are you still... I am still the one you know. But my perspective has changed. I have not forgotten you, if that is your fear. Fall from Grace smiles again, the same sad smile as before. No, not in my fear. I cannot remain here much longer. My punishment calls and fate times shall soon be here. I will return you to Sigil, if you wish. That is not my wish. I will find you again, no matter where the lower plains you will be, just as you shall be able to find me. It may be a long time where I'm born. Time is not measured in years, and crimes I have committed are stronger than any cage. No cage shall separate us. No plane divide us. Fall from grace, faces become like a stone. Keep thinking of me. We shall meet again. I shall not forget you. All you have sacrificed for me. She shakes her head. Just do not forget me. Time lay waste to all things. But I shall fight it as long as I can. Time is not your enemy. Forever is. Perhaps so. Farewell, Grace. Valor! Rise, you succulent son of a bitch! The slightest touch of your power seems to set spark through Valor's armored shell. It rises into the air and refits itself into the semblance of a man, as the armor reattaches two fire blazes within the hell. Arise, Valor! Valor's helm turns towards you, his eyes pulsating like twin heartbeats. Valor, Justice's hand is swift! It is coming for me. Now I shall not remain here much longer. I will return you to Sigil, if you wish. What crime has brought justice upon you? Many died, so that I might live, Valor. The crime is great, and the time and fate have come for me even now. Let my words carry you. Justice is a teacher. And your punishment finds strength. Through punishment you will achieve perfection. Perhaps so, Valor. I will think upon your words. Now, that should you escape your sentence, I shall find you nameless one. The hand of justice shall not be stayed. <laughs> we shall not meet again, I think, Valor. I shall dwell in Justice's Hall for a time, and the time shall not be measured in years. Farewell.
what can change the nature of a man. Well, folks, I'd like to thank you thoroughly for watching all 59 videos of my Planescape Torment walkthrough. Let's play. It's been several months and several hours. One fantastic game. No doubt. At one point in my life, I thought it'd never end. But this, my friends, is the end. And thank you again for watching. This has been a game harder let's play of the game Planescape Torment. If you enjoyed this let's play, be sure to be tuned for future let's plays. Now it's time to finish the Stone Prophet, Icewind Dale expansions, and stay tuned for the Elder Scroll Skyrim. Later, my fucking friends. <laughs> Ha 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 ha.